This episode is brought to you by Hawthorne. Great body soap. I smell like a man. I feel like a man. Um, go to Hawthorne.co. Um, use the promo code WILD. Thank you for sponsoring the show. It just smells really, really, really good. And for the first time, I do feel like the natural man that my mother says I am, but I don't feel like on the inside. It's Hawthorne.co. The last M is for you. You're a man. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The History Hyenas. Chrissy D, Yanni P. I'm tired. I had too many zucchini slices and a black and white. Yeah, but here's the thing. This is going to be a great episode because we started it with zucchini slices. That's what it is. So when you have zucchini slices, you're going to take a little dip. Yeah. And it's not because of the zucchini. It's because of the bacon they hide underneath the cheese. It's what it is. But then we always finish strong. Let's finish strong. Today's episode is about the history of the news, which I might call the history of the snooze. <laughs> <laughs> You're not here for this. I'll tell I'm you. I'm not here for this topic. This is make no mistake. This is Giannis Papas, aka Yanni the <laughs> topic pick. There we go. We can't. Yeah, that we got some. Every throat. time I say the F word, Benetia's gonna throw a cookie at me. We so can keep cackle. track at home. We How many cackle. cookies get thrown at me? Yeah, I mean Yaya's cookies are in the building. They may come a fly in. <laughs> they may come a fly in. But yeah, so we'll just call them. Listen, we're gonna cackle it, but you know what? If this is a topic from YTF, you fill in the blanks, you know what it is. <laughs> Because, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean we else? are the news for about 800 people every morning, and I'm scared. I'm scared. Yeah, every time I see a new militia popping up, I say, I hope that's not the hyenas listening to WEPA. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. News has become uh, entertainment. It's content now. We could be news anchors because now it's gone back to, like, where you could just be an amateur with the camera. You're part of the news. It's almost back to village gossip. It's amazing how far we've come technologically has brought us right back to the Greek village. It's what and it that's is. why I want to burn Venetia because she's having sex before marriage. <laughs> it's what it is. And I think we should go back to old Greek village rules. Listen, go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. We do weapon in the morning every day. We're doing a lot of stuff down there. Also, go to christycomedy.com. I got a show, August 29th, Monmouth Racetrack. All socially distanced, all spread out. Come get your tickets. August 29th, christycomedy.com, historyhyenas.com. August 12th, I'm in Royersford, PA, and then I'm at the Stress Factory um, last weekend of September. With so Vinny get, Brand. With Vinny Brand. So those tickets are being posted recently, but you can go get them at uh, the Stress ca yeah. Factories. Uh, yeah, and saying, stand-up's yeah. over. Stand so we're going yeah. gonna, to gonna push out these last few shows, but, I mean, the motivation to do it is almost at a set all. I'd rather just sit in these West Elm chairs and read notes off a of TV that Venetia hired an intern to do. Here's what we're going to do. In the future, when this thing is done, we're going to start doing shows in people's basements. I don't understand why none of the teams that need new names because their teams are racist and sexist picked the hyenas as their name because they are the original chicks with dicks. They are the original trans animal and I'm a little upset at the animal advocacy groups and the LGBTQ community to not take the opportunity to change the name from the Washington Redskins to the Washington Hyenas or the Washington trans animals. I don't know why they didn't take that opportunity. Because that is an amazing point and that only means one thing. Yeah. You're putting a bunch of people on, on notice. notice. <laughs> so it's what it is. Yeah. You guys are all pieces of shit scumbags and you know it and nothing's real. Ryan Reynolds' apology is fake. It's all fake. It's all fake and that's why the history of the news is interesting because it's fake. As a matter of fact, the news was created by the actor Diorna, uh, which is from 59 BCE or 59 BEC bacon, egg, and cheese. And, uh, and, it's, and it, it recorded important daily events such as public speeches and also executions and whatever else they were doing back then and fucking each other in the ass because make no mistake, ancient Rome, like ancient Greece, was three letters. Give me a G, give me an A, give me a Y. We, yeah. we just broke every single rule of not cursing before the five minutes, but we are the hyenas. You get what? you get an S low K hey, S. It it's what it is. It doesn't matter. These ads are going to be flagged anyway. It doesn't matter. Also, ads don't even pay that much. We found out what some of the other podcasts are making off ad money. It's just not even really that great anyway. So you know what? <laughs> Take your body soap and shove it. <laughs> <laughs>
I got light. Down. Hold on, my blood pressure. When I laugh too hard, it, my it, blood pressure it drops. goes down. Is that because I'm an old man, or is that genetic? It's, what happens? It's genetic, and it's 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 probably genetic. It's your well, old man. Well, why do I almost faint when I laugh really because hard? Because I think you're such on the cusp. I think you're 51 percent testosterone, testosterone, 49 percent estrogen. And then when you laugh like that, because you laugh like such a little girl, it just flips quick, <laughs> and it, and it puts a switch out the same way Tim Dillon has to reset his eyes because yeah. he his gay resets. Yeah, he's got to reset the gay. Yeah, yeah. 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 So and the truth is like that's why the fans at patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys you're our untouchable group you're the group that we love the most because we know you're not going anywhere and you're, everything else is solid except but, at the end of the month when you dip down about fucking a thousand yeah that's the only issue yeah. so but but other than that we know you guys are here to stay and we love you so much go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys and support the matriarchy yeah. but yeah so and also in 59 BCE with the act of Duerna where the news came from fake news took off at the same time too so as long as there's been news there's been fake news it's just at a fever pitch now because I I loved it just even in ancient Rome, they called things acta diarna. It just sounds like a what dish that it just some sounds like something I want to order at an Italian restaurant. Acta diarna. Can I get the acta diarna? Acta diarna. Please welcome the co host, the Italian model. Acta diarna. Yeah, and you would get it, and you would, and if, I would the like wait, if the waitress served it to you yeah. and something was wrong with the waitress, you wouldn't be able to eat it. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, it's just what it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wayne's yeah, no, team. don't. Let's cackle that because that, that I really, that's just mean. Yes. I, I'm just being silly. The other stuff keep in, including the Hawthorne shit. Yes, let's so, keep it in. But I'm sorry about, I'm sorry about the, that one. The cackle that out because that's mean and it's just, you know, it's my own thing. Yeah. Um, but, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting, you know, what, I don't even know. What was I saying before? Well, well I'll just kick you, you reset your gay and I'll just take us back to the timeline. Yeah. News basically started as gossip when we were an agrarian right. society, when we were a pre-literate society. It was just gossip. Anyone could be the news. And make no mistake, the most interesting part about this research for me was finding out that news originated with fake news. Yeah. Because when anything's in the hands of the people, yeah. I mean, people are just going to lie. Yeah, they're just going to lie. It's the same thing that happened in the Revolutionary War. Benjamin Franklin was lying, saying that uh, the, the Native Americans who were fighting on their British side, King George's Native Americans, were scalping the soldiers when, in fact, they weren't scalping the soldiers at all. But he made up fake news. But the truth is, I'm not even mad at that fake news because they were an enemy of the state at the time. So I'm all for fake news that benefits the American public. Here's another one. The v Vietnam War started with a fake news. What happened? Because it was reported that uh, a couple of our uh, boats got sank, but it was it was us that fucking went on fire first. So we reported it. It was uh, it was the Tet. Can you someone look that up? It's the Tet Offensive. Yeah. If, if you guys Try think out there you that your country, our country, cares about us at all, they do not. You will be a victim of fake news, and they could care less because it's all hidden black market war war agendas. Um, I just watched a show on Amazon Prime called The Last Narc about the killing of Kiki Camarena from uh, th season three of the show Narcos on Netflix. And Bubba's the way our government and the CIA and the DEA are involved is freaking wild. And if I hear Los Estados Unidos one more time or Politicos for politicians, I'm going to fucking stick a can of koi beans up my ass and yell Trump 2020 when I come. Es lo que as. Yeah, it's yeah. just what it is. Es lo que yeah. Yeah, the Ted Offensive. The Ted Offensive... Um, <laughs> That's I the, thought it was called the Ted Offensive about Alexandro's Ted, Ted, comedy. Yeah, it was Way <laughs> Song <Chi. laughs> So, yeah, I mean, this is how the Vietnam War That's, started. Yeah. With a fake, fake report to the American people. The whole fucking Vietnam... Um, think about this, cuz. And also, weapons of mass destruction, also fucking fake news. It's all fake news. Fake news did not start with Donnie T going... You are fake news. You are fake news. But it is a fun way to tell someone you're not listening to their question by going, you are fake news. Fake news. But yeah, Vietnam, yeah, it's all fake news. So the Ted Offensive, yeah, it's bullshit It attack. was fake news. So fake news, news started with fake news, and then it's kind of remained fake news. It's mostly fake. Everyone always put their spin on, uh, their spin on it until there was like we had a little moment in history, and maybe only in our country, Right. Like in America, where for a second there was a standard that you had to live up to. 60 Minutes was one of those those things that started that tried to give you, you know, real fucking Cause let me news. ask you a question. When you were a kid. When 60 Minutes was the, the first news program to be profitable in our country. How wild is that? When you were 15, 16 years old, did you ever throw on the stock eggs and crank it a little bit to Barbara Walters? Because I did. <laughs> I mean, Barbara Walters had one of the wildest voices. She had that kind of like, it almost looked like she was like, she had a stroke, kind of. 
For an old woman, though, I mean, who's hotter than Barbara Walters as an older lady? I could think of a lot of people who are hotter than Barbara Walters. As an old woman, though? Yeah, as an old woman. Yeah, Cher will fucking get it. That's what I it mean, is. Cher will get it. You know who else will get it? Jane Fonda will get fucking cracked open and cleaned the fuck, fuck out. Ah. No, Barbara Walters, she just kind of looks like a mom of a friend who you went to camp with and then you go visit because you stayed in contact as pen pals, but that person lives in the Midwest, and that's the mom that fucking makes you a cake. She's it's, a Midwestern mom, and I would not hit that. It's just what, yeah, see, I would. I used to jerk off a lot to Barbara Walters. Yeah, but you jerked off to a lot of weird stuff as well. It's just what it is, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. You I, would also answer, answer the door for Chinese food delivery in a Giants helmet and high heels. Yeah, my mother's high heels, yeah, and a Giants helmet, yeah. And then Did I, you sometimes do that when the boys weren't over because it, it just felt good? It was is just that a fun how your thing. feet got shaped that way? It, that's how my feet got shaped. Because did you sleep in your mom's high heels? I would jam them. I would jam them in. Uh, I would jam my, my feet in my mother's high heels when she went to work. And then I'd, and then I'd order beef and broccoli and I'd shit in a little box. Way song song. <laughs> did you think? Do you think your mom... How many times do you think your mom had to go back to church after Sunday to try to pray something away that she saw you do it? I think a lot of times. I think a lot of times. And I think the fact that the doors of uh, the church, the local Ridgewood Parish, have been closed because of the pandemic have been really hard on her. Because make no mistake, some of the recent choices, moms had to do a lot of praying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you probably don't know it. You probably haven't thought about it at all. But I'm here to tell you that there's been a lot of conferences on the neutrals between the two matriarchs. I believe it. In that building. 100%. Your aunt and your mom have definitely sat down a stair apart, a little sideways, yeah. with a little plate of cookies, yeah. a couple of sankas, yeah. and then some follow-up brews, yeah. and they've been trying to figure out how they're going to get you out of this. Yeah, how they're going to reel me in. And they, 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 they met, and they, they, yeah. they went like this, oh my God. We don't even have to put our plan into place because Jesus took the wheel and he did it for us. He did it for us. And what you said this morning on Weapon in the Morning every day, uh, Monday to Friday, at patreon.com slash Barry Rich Boys, saying that I uh, am running around the park. I'm off the leash running around the park. Is it 10? Yeah. And I think that's what we'll say right now. When I go wild, I say, Chris is running around the park. Yeah, what happens, <laughs> this is what happens with Christy. I mean, Chrissy's just a wild... As you know, what, Chrissy's got to be unbridled. You got to let him run free. He's a fucking stallion. It's what it You're is. You're a fucking wild horse, babe. Uh, yeah. And you can't put a saddle on that fucking horse. You My just, butt's too big for the saddle. Yeah, I mean, you're going to slip off. The saddle's going to fucking slip off. Yeah. You're a wild horse. You got to run free in the fields. And it's yeah. what it is. And once in a while, you just start... You start kicking. <laughs> you start kicking. And it's... You know, you, you know when you start kicking? When? Whenever you see... <laughs> It's just what it is. You just start kicking them. It's what it is. I don't know why, but you're a wild stallion, and we'll cackle that part. But what happens once in a while is just we got a, we got a collar and we got a leash on Chris. Yeah. Once in a while, the kid just gets loose from his I'm, collar, and, and, and he just fucking darts into the park. I mean, um, everything Venetia told you not to, you do it, and that's why I love you to death. Yeah, it's because just what it is. Because anytime when she says, make sure not to do that, I'm pretty sure there's a 100% chance it's going to happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. you just can't put a fucking saddle on that puppy. It's just what it is because I'm charged up. I had a couple black and whites. I had a Yaya's cookie. I had three zucchini slices, and this is my third cup of coffee. So I'm just fucking charged the fuck up. You're fully fucking charged, and you know what? We're, we we got to pick topics that you don't really connect to more often. Yeah, yeah, because look, here it is. I mean, what, what do we got? So the first American... Uh, yeah, so, what, so just tell us what you know about this and why this was interesting to you, Yanni. Why well, TF? Well, because it's an it's an interesting it's an interesting topic to think about the history of the news because the news the news dictates so much of what your city, your state, your tribe, your village, your country believes. Right. I mean, it's basically your main arm of propaganda. In Nazi Germany, um, you know, the the people who controlled that party the four heads of them, one of them was basically- I call them the founding fathers. Wei Song Shane. Wei Song Shane. We need a Wei button. Song I'm Shane. just kidding. I know, we can't. It's a Wei joke. Song Everyone knows Shane. it's a joke. Wei Shane, yeah, but we need kidding. a button. Can we put that in in post or no, something? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we need Shane. the button back because that's when Chrissy's most comfortable. Yeah. And he should be I, comfortable to make that joke. Yeah, I should yeah. just- well, that one, But we, we need we the, think, If we got to edit that out, and we're back. Yeah, and we're Let's back. Let's edit that one yeah. out then, fine. Yeah. We got, and we're I back. thought because I'm wearing the Wei Shan Chien shirt, I can yeah. just go free right. I thought I could just run around the park because I got the Wei Shan Chien shirt on. You've had enough. You you want to let go. You want to run. Yeah, a little I've bit. just had a fuck enough because I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm just. I'm trying to do comedy. Yeah, I'm just doing comedy. But it's like anything you say in today's world can't be taken as comedy 
because so many unfunny people have been rewarded by fucking comedy. So, so many unfunny people in our world in the past 20 years have just gotten shows and specials and you've never been funny and you never be funny, but you got fucking opportunities because the world's been bullshit. Well, now that Donnie T is here to stay, the truth is coming out and the funny people will remain funny because I fucking have always been funny because I was molested by a priest. Clip it! Character piece. <laughs> I mean, that's a clip right there. Yeah. I mean, phones are going off. This one's going to be a fucking a wild. wild. You heard it right there. We'll be right back. That was Walter Cronkite with the it's news. What is? Yellow journalism is widely understood to describe salacious, over-the-top, scandal-driven journalism. Uh, we call it, uh, in America, colloquially, we call it tabloid journalism. Right, right now, you can't tell the difference between tabloid journalism and yeah. regular journalism. But, like I said... It was really always like that, which is amazing. Everyone thinks fake news has become a recent problem, but it um, it has always been that way, except, like I said, for this little point in history where the FCC in, instilled uh, what's called the Fairness Doctrine, I believe, in 1945. Was it 45 or 35? 1945, the Fairness Doctrine, which basically was the FCC saying, hey, babe, you got to try to be fair, you got to try to be objective, and you got to talk about stuff that has national interest. Interest, So it's right. for the people. You have to try to be balanced. But then Reagan got rid of that shit in 84. Right, and right. And so a lot of fucking libs. What do we got? 87. 87. Oh, 87, yeah. He got rid of it in 87. So it went from 45 to 87. 49. So the Fairness Doctrine started in 1949. We're not a real history podcast at all. Do you think anybody like in the deep outer boroughs of Brooklyn or Queens calls the coronavirus? I mean, what? <laughs> I mean, it's, there's definitely, it's been said in a few bars in Ridgewood for sure. It's just what it is. And yeah. I'm not saying I'm happy about it, but I'm, uh, it's not, but it's just interesting. That how re- it's, we could cut that out. It's definitely, I mean, no, but you, you, you know, you're saying somebody else calls it I'm that. I'm saying I wonder if somebody else ever called it yeah. that, and that's not appropriate. Yeah, no, that's um, definitely not appropriate. Let's go to the you FCC. You guys are going to have a lot of post work to do here. I let's mean, there's the, a lot of stuff we got to cackle let's out. Let's go to the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, or I like to call it the Federal Communism Com- Commission, <laughs> because they required licensed radio and television broadcasters to present fair and balanced coverage of controversial issues of interest to their communities by deviating equal airtime to opposing points of views. And I kind of, in the capitalist form, where I just think if you're funnier and better, then you just get more airtime. Yeah, so, well, actually, it's funny that you say that because a lot of people who are against uh, the... Um, Fairness Doctrine would say that. Say, hey, freedom of speech, First Amendment, you can yeah. say whatever you want. You say whatever you want, say babe. Say whatever you want, babe. And it's like, if I want to turn up, it's like, you know, it's like, look, leave it up to me as a consumer. to put, I watch what I want to fucking watch. If I don't want to see any more detailed coverage about whatever your bullshit point of view is, and I want to watch the other person, then that's what I'll do. The only problem is when you get such a big society, you get such a big country, somebody has to be acting in the public interest to tell them the truth. If the people really do rule, if the people really... If the government is by the people for the people, then you got to have somebody who's acting on behalf of the people and not the interest. Because if I'm telling the news and I'm telling it just to be entertaining or if I have an agenda because I have some alliance with some company or something like that, then that's not really for the people. That's the big irony of freedom and democracy. It's like if you want the people to rule, something has to be in the public interest. And for it to be in the public interest, it can't be capitalist, which is the best system for personal freedom in the economic realm is capitalism. So it's a little ironic. What do we do? So the fairness, Rub some Hawthorne soap on it. The fairness doctrine was perceived by some as an infringement of the right to freedom of speech. In 87, the FCC formally repealed the fairness doctrine, but maintained both the editorial and personal attack provisions, which remained in effect until 2000. And then, uh, and then yeah, and then 2001 happened and the, everything changed. And then everything the changed, changed after that. That's, yeah. uh, that could be a direct result in 9-11 is because the fairness doctrine went away. You never know how these, these chains of events unfold, but one thing could have led to another without a doubt. I haven't really done my causal research on that. Here we go. Here we go. So, here we go. And then consequences of uh, partisan news coverage examples were one of the examples is South African President Thabo Mbeki claimed that anti-retroviral anti, uh, drugs were part of a Western plot and that garlic and lemon juice could be used to treat AIDS. And then over 300K died. I mean, so it sounds a little Trumpy what's going on <laughs> when he's like, hey, just drink your fish tank water and your corona's going to go away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the point. So here's an example <laughs> of fake news that was very harmful to certain people. So is it important to be objective in news? 
Um, I guess. I mean, you know, it, it, but the, if we if you look, if well, you if here, we t- this one's about climate science, right here. They say. Uh, uh, um, global warming became deeply partisan in the 90s. Oil companies started doing their own research and they wanted media coverage. Simultaneously, they were contributing money to and lobbying government officials. All this was merely manufactured, all this was to merely manufacture doubt meant to obscure the fact that the world's climate scientists had all but reached consensus on the fact that climate change was occurring and that human activity was responsible for it. And as long as there are skeptics out there, the media felt duty bound to report climate change as a disputed topic when it really shouldn't be disputed at all. So that's what it is. So they're saying that scientists had already reached the consensus, but the controversy was a political one that had been stirred up by the oil companies. So if you want, and that's what I guess is happening with Corona right now, when they're creating, I guess in some ways, when people say, why are they taking away videos of the pandemic, but they're leaving up videos of whatever, white supremacy. And I guess this is why, because they're saying, you guys are creating this controversy that can really do a lot of harm because- we think that, you know, the, if you listen to the scientists, they're all saying, this is what you do to stop corona. But then, you know, other people are saying, yeah, all you got to do is drink your fish tank water and you're good. I think maybe at this point you just let it all fly. That's what I'm saying. Maybe Why? you just go, hey, look. Let's open up 100%. Yeah, you say, let's open up 100% and, and whatever you want to say on the news, you can say on the news. You want to do whatever. You want to say whatever. You want to lie. You want to create fake news. You want to do real news. It's up to you. Whatever people get uh, get hoodwinked by it or manipulated by it, so be it. Whatever happens, happens. May the best group win. May the right. best person win. And we go full Darwin Awards and see who makes see it. See who makes it. I think that's the only way to do it at this point. We've made it this far. We've done everything. Yeah. Let's have a full-on war games and see who fucking wins. Let's just see who does it. I'm very willing. I'll go out. I, if you opened up 100% right now, I'd go out. I'd keep the mask on at all times because I understand that that's important. I'd wash my hands. i do my due diligence. But it's like to have these little plans and say you can't open here, you can't open there. You're getting to the point of this real civil unrest coming. And I just don't know, you know, what else to do but vote for Donald Trump. Way so now, do you think it's better to have accredited journalists that, like, went to school, are journalists, like... They're regulated, or you just think have a phone, go write it, blog it down, and yeah. go with it. Just block which it. one do you go? Just blog it down because everyone's saying like, "Oh, trial by Twitter." Uh, you know, uh, you know, we don't uh, do process, and it's like, yeah, due process is gone. It's not a, it's not about this cancel culture and these. They're not about. They don't care about due process. Nobody's going to jail. It's just like this thing that they fucking want to. I think the best thing we could do as a country is get rid of Twitter. I think if we go, lose TikTok, lose Twitter, and honestly lose Instagram. Even if it hurt my career a little bit, I would feel so much so better. for government regulation. Then. I want it all to go away. I yeah. think social media is an experiment that is proven to not be working. I think if you try to band us all together, it does not work. And I think that the only thing that works is, is, is us staying in kind of our little bubbles. It's like, it's good when you only know the people in your neighborhood. That's great. I don't, think, I don't think there's any reason that I should be friends with someone on the other side of the world and be able to communicate with them like that. It does us no good. We're living in two different worlds. It just creates all these false, false premises on both sides, and I want it all out. And fuck you, AOC. Lot of 14. It's what it is. There you go. There's the official statement from the History Hyenas News Organization. It's what it is. That's okay? what we need to do. You got, yeah, from Cucker Carlson, and, and I'll just call you Anderson Cooper because you're YTF. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Yanni Trans? Yanni, Yanni, the, Yanni, Yanni the friend. The, yeah. Yanni the Faji. <laughs> Yanni the Faji yogurt because she's Greek. <laughs> yeah. It's what it is. I mean, because right now we're living in a post truth society. Well, let's li- Well, what do they say about the influx of social media? I don't media? know because I can't see the fucking screen. Okay, here when we go. are we going to get the fucking thing to put it up there? The rise of social media has facilitated an informational free for all with fact and opinion now presented side by side on the internet with no filters and no vetting. Readers and viewers are readily exposed to a steady stream of pure partisanship. Social media is a source of news blurred the lines even further between news and opinion as people shared stories from blogs and alternative news sites as if they were all true. In a recent Pew poll, 62% of U.S. adults reported getting their news from social media, and 71% of that was from Facebook. This means that 44% of the total adult U.S. population now gets its news from Facebook, whose owner, whose creator, Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg went to Venezuela and got butt implants and fucked comes out with cum all over his face and goes surfing in Hawaii. So that's what it is. There was actually right now a scientist um, who was using a fake Twitter account for like a couple years 
and was reporting on all these like injustices that were happening to uh, like uh, people who, uh, who had different sexual orientations. Right. And um, it turned out that she, it was just all fake news. She created a fake account. I believe it. And was pretending to be this social justice warrior person. It's all and fake. that person didn't exist. It's all fake. And that person was always advocating for her. Like for tenure for her and stuff like that, right? And also, this this make believe scientist became beloved by all these other kind of scientists. She created a woke hero on Twitter that didn't exist. Dude, look at Tim Dillon. Look at Tim Dillon's post last week when he said put Ellen in jail, and then he gets written up in Newsweek for like a, a celebrity speaking out against Ellen, and they earnestly wrote that he he thought that they thought he believed she should be put in jail. It's like what the fuck is going on? What's going on is the standard for journalism has dropped so low and things move so quick and they're not held accountable. No. It's wild because me and you were held accountable for some strange reason, even though it says quite clearly and our profession quite clearly indicates that we're not required to tell the truth ever. In fact, jokes are never fucking true. No. Otherwise, they're not jokes. But for some reason, we're held accountable. But that journalist who wrote that article in Newsweek and told Tim and, and quoted Tim as saying, put Ellen in jail and thought that he was doing it earnestly, there's probably no repercussions for that. I know. Which is wild. So I don't know because the big question, do we need a new fairness doctrine or some type of doctrine that says, hey, babe, you got to try to tell the truth or else we're going to put you in jail or burn you at the stake like a woman who's having premarital sex in the Greek village. It's what it is, cuz, yeah. We I need guess. to do something with these journalists. We got to put their feet to the fire. For some reason, we're taking heat. I know. Why are comedians taking heat? Uh, what the fuck is going on? Cuz, I got a new fairness doctrine and it's called the snap and fucking two. I like That's it. That's the new fairness doctrine. I'm going to call it snap and two because if you fucking want to write an article that I don't think is fair, guess what? Now you're going to see somebody come at you in a different way. <laughs> fucking different way <laughs> is all of this John can we hire John a to be our security absolutely he just comes at Pete John a he just comes at people in a different way I'll come see you in a different way I'll give you an opportunity <laughs> steps up you're gonna get come seen in a different way we will come see you in a different way I'll take money from the Patreon to hire John a to come see people who want to tweet at us in a different way in a different fucking way cuz let me tell you I'm very excited about our new sponsor Hawthorne, this is an all-in-one. This is what makes it so great. Because I'm a man, I like things easy. Right. We took this online quiz that they do on their website. They recommend the products based on the way you answer the questions. It comes in a nice package. It made me feel like a man. It actually, this product, I'm being honest, the, the way this smells, smells so good that I feel like such like a man that I worry about being such a part of the patriarchy that I'm going to get taken down for smelling so good because this product just makes me go freaking and pewing. I'm being honest. Like, with they, because we get sent stuff, right? And we're like, oh, huh, we have to fake it. There's no faking it with this, okay? This genuinely smells fantastic. Go to hawthorne.co, put in the promo code wild, and you're going to get 15% off your order. Or is it 10%? It's one of them. It doesn't matter. You're going to get 10% off your offer. 10% off your order. Go to hawthorne.co. They left the M out because you're the man. They didn't want to take it. Yes. Money. This is such a cute masculine smell yeah. that I really think that the cancel mob is going to come for them for supporting the patriarchy. 100%, 100% Hawthorne. Do it. Uh. Yes. Hawthorne.co. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. Is a lot of this John Stewart's fault because he was so good, so good at delivering the news in a funny way, yeah. making fun of Fox News, that people started at that moment, they started actually going to Comedy Central and watching The Daily Show in order to get their news. That was like the beginning, and that was pre-Twitter, that was pre- He was so good at his job. It Was that the fucking beginning of the end? It because, might have been, that's a very good point. Yeah, because now like fucking, now they hire people like Trevor, people who Trevor know, these are comedians, man. Yeah. So it's like, is that the people's fault, or is it was it a byproduct of him being so good at his job, or was it because media was failing so bad? Because at the time, CNN had Crossfire on, or it was Tucker Carlson in a fucking bow tie across from right. some other fucking idiot. I don't even remember his name, and they would argue every issue, and it was theater. It became like theater. Do you think that there is a platform that some presidential candidate or governor, high ranking politician can run on and, and, and make claims that social media is destroying us and get rid of it? Or do you think we're living in a world where social media cannot go away and it will not go I away? I don't blame social media, to be honest with you. If you want my opinion, I blame uh, private news. Some things can't be private. 
They can't, there needs so do you think that can change or it's like healthcare where we're in too deep and you can't make the news private just like you can't make healthcare public? I mean, you can't make either one of them public. It's fine to have subscription-based news. That's fine, okay? There's always fine to have a private option for everything. But uh, you can have your own private, uh, let's say, acre of land, for example. But you also have to have pr- public parks or else you don't have a city. You don't have a village. You don't have a town. With, but isn't you, like New York One, isn't that public? Isn't that like, spo- like we, we, uh, New York One is not public. What's like a, uh, NPR is public. NPR is but just public. terribly underfunded. And, um, you know, it, it, it needs to be funded more and it needs, and that's it. Yeah, the Chris the, Gethard show was on the public access channel. It was the public access network. And it, and, How's she doing, Chris Gethard? And there Gethard? also needs Way to be a time. standard. <laughs> there needs to be a standard for truth that you, these people need to be held accountable. I love it's you, Chris. Just, you have to evolve to have a standard to hold these people accountable for what they say. Yeah. I mean, if like you just, if you're a journalist and you say, hey, the, boom, boom, and it turns out that that's false. Yeah. Somebody's got to go, hey, you can't do that. Yeah, you can't do, and you got to prove whether he was intentionally doing that or not. You got to do that. So I don't blame social media in the sense because this started with cable news. Yeah, that's where it started. Fucking see, I blame I blame Ted Turner and I blame Fox News. I blame your neighborhood. It's what it is. I'm just kidding. What can you do? Um, so now we're living in the phenomenon of post truth. Um, and that rocketed to public attention in November of 2016 when um when uh you know. You know what happened in November 2016. Uh, <laughs> you know what happened, baby. Um, and uh, Vanity's mom started developing her heart palpitations. Yeah, it's, <laughs> she cannot handle Donald Trump. Because oh, yeah. isn't it funny when you go to someone's Facebook page and you can tell how much they can't handle whoever's in office? Yeah, it's just what it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's if you go to some kids in Long Island's page during the Obama administration, it's just they're not talking about their family. There's just a bunch of articles. That are just, you don't want to see about Obama. It's just what it is. And yeah. now it's like the, a lot of people hate Trump the same way. I know. I think the orange man brought us into the golden years. But <laughs> here it is. So it's defined as, post-truth is defined as relating to or denoting circumstances in which objective facts are less influential in shaping public opinion than appeals to emotion and personal belief. Post-truth is not so much a claim that truth does not exist as that facts are subordinate to our political point of view. So, I mean, that feels pretty accurate to what's going on right now. That feels very accurate. That's what it is. I worked for a media company for a little while when I had uh, that show on Fusion, and they were owned by ABC News. All the people that worked there were in the news business beforehand working for ABC News. Right. And I can tell you there's a pressure now, especially with the Internet and how fast things move, but there was probably a pressure back then before the Internet when it was just cable news to yeah. get ratings. Right. So it's like what gets ratings more, right? Right. What gets ratings more? Uh, you know, a comedian delivering his version of the news no. or a partisan, a charismatic partisan personality delivering or some boring guy just sitting there going, these are the facts. The same way Donald Trump is, there's so many pictures of Donald Trump hanging out with Hillary Clinton and they're all friends. It's the same thing with the news people. You really think Anderson Cooper and Tucker Carlson don't fucking privately tag? They're all, it's all, they're all fucking, it's, they're playing on teams. Right. Just the same way, you know, uh, my Magic Johnson and Larry Bird would hang out because they're playing on different teams. All these people are rich fucking white. They don't give a fuck about you. Just like George Carlin would say, they don't care at all. Yeah. They have so much money, they're just playing for whatever team they're supposed to be playing for. They don't give a fuck. It's, they don't give a fuck. No, it's all, it's all, all content it's all a show yeah. it's all theater and i think that that's sad the people should at least have a very strong power 60 minutes is like the only good news show at all anywhere right where else is it what's 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 reliable news now with the associated press which is old school uh reuters the maybe? new york post i mean what is like good <laughs> solid reputable news it's crazy and then to think once the subscription model went out like it used to be you had you had the, the new york times had a standard that they held themselves to you had the new york times boston globe los angeles times chicago sun and those were all uh, held up by subscription. By subscription. People would subscribe. They made money. Right. And so they were held to a certain standard by their subscribers. Right. And then once that went out the window and the internet came, the, the newspaper business, in order to stay in business, had to get a little more racy to get clicks because they became really dependent on advertisers and not subscriptions. So I'm talking to you people out there. Go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys and support the subscription model or else we're going to start fucking shooking and jiving to sell Joy Dish soap and it's going to be your fault when Chrissy can't say 
say anything, and we're both replaced by women. It's going to be your fault because you didn't support us. Go watch Wep in the Morning every day. Every freaking day, and wash your butt with Hawthorne Soap, Hawthorne.co. Yeah. Um, so here we go. So do you know any of these people, Janet Cook? Personally, I do, yes. So what is, so what, so tell me about these people, like what, because what, you did some research, you read about these, about these people. What is it? Well, you got Jason Blair, you got Sabrina Erdley. And so who are they? Like they're what? fucking journalists. Right. And they they were caught playing. Well, here we go. Sabrina yeah. Erdley, let's read. Former journalist and American Magazine reporter who in 2014 authorized an article in Rolling Stone describing the alleged rape of a University of Virginia student by several fraternity members. The article was later discredited, found to be unsupported by evidence. So it's basically saying that she reported on this and it was never brought to the court of law because... There was no evidence to support that this woman was actually raped. Yeah, I mean, but what, Sabrina doesn't go to jail for that. Exactly, but that's she my should point. be. Exa that's my fucking point. Venetia, as a woman, just into the mic, should Sabrina go to jail for that, or are we kind of not taking it all into consideration? If it's proven that she did it on purpose, like she, you, you could see that she ignored evidence. Oh yeah, and she did it on purpose. 100%. That's a bad, bad thing. Yeah. I mean, we go back to Tawana Brawley in New York. Remember, she said she was raped. Blah blah. blah. She was lying to people. You can't really blame the press there, I guess, but you kind of can because you're going like, what evidence do you guys have before you make this a natural story? That's, what's your, what's your evidence? That's what I should feel. That's what I feel like the the problem that lies there in that one, where it should be, we use the court of law. We use what we have, the court of law, they go through our legal system, what we all have agreed upon as American citizens in the Constitution to be tried by a jury of our peers. We let them go through that process. Whatever the outcome is, then you can write on it. Whether it's not guilty or guilty, it should be illegal to write about a case that does not have a verdict yet. It should be 100% illegal because then that you don't have to worry about swaying a jury. It's like the public should not know until it goes through the court of law. And I feel like because our whole society is now based in schadenfreude, and watching the destruction of man, we won't have it the other way because we're living in like a really, really crazy time when in reality, I think the founding fathers would even agree like, no, we go to the court of law first and then you talk about it. Because if you do it the other way, the way we're doing it now, then there's always a jury that's going to be tainted. It, all you do is taint. Right. It, all you do. I don't want to hear about, I shouldn't have even heard about Bill Cosby until it was brought through the proper channels through the court of our law and then we talk about it. Yeah, you're actually, I got to agree with you, but you know, there's this industry of people who depend on those salacious right. stories. I know, that's what's scary. Attaching themselves to those stories so they can make money and get bigger. If they solve racism and sexism and individualism and all that every other ism that they want to make up, they have nothing to write about, they have no jobs, that it is in their duty to keep it alive. And isn't it fucking convenient they've made us accountable? Isn't that fucking hilarious? I ain't saying they're not smart. Isn't it hilarious that comedians are the ones that are held accountable? Yeah. And who, who are we held accountable to? Who are we held accountable to? Journalists. That's what it is. Isn't that fucking funny how you guys have used those mafia tactics to hunt us with your articles, but nobody's holding you fucking accountable? Yeah. What do you call that? That's called fucking a smokescreen. That's called the journalists figuring it out. The journalists figuring it out and coming at us in a different way. They came at they us. They came at us in their way of a different way. They're using us as a scapegoat. Uh, they're using a comedians as a scapegoat while they can continue to just run amok and write whatever. Well, now, yeah. And it's what it is. And a lot of them say, I, I did stand up three or four times. Yeah. No, you know you no, you're not a stand up. You're not a comedian. Yeah, you stand up. You're you're a fucking small time journalist. And, and guess what, journalists? Unfortunately now you've met your match because all you people like to do is say, Well, if you do this and I'm gonna write a story, I'm gonna come jam it down your throat or jam it up your ass and guess what baby that's the only way I can come so good good let's take for example uh, you know it's a very interesting example of all this and uh, it brings sort of fake news the modern era everything into perspective was the the the, the um, what the Covington kids Right. That was a perfect example. Those kids walked out with about 25 mil now. So that they one kind of, kid. The one kid. But hey, yeah. at least it's like. And he's not done. He's not done. Good. And good. He should fucking hold them over Get the him fire off. for that. Get him And off. I'm not saying that because it was Republican versus Democrat. If the same thing, if yes. a Democrat was holding a Republican over the fire or a conservative kid and they were fucking wrong, then the same thing. Fuck you. Yeah. I mean, he's now settled. I don't know how many lawsuits he's settled, but he's getting these. Uh, good. These media outlets to really pay up. Good. The settlement's not disclosed. It's not public knowledge. That's probably part of the settlement. But he's making the him pay. He walked out. Yeah, with some so loot. as you know. What's if, the story again? If you don't know the Covington story, so this was this little video that actually it ended up 
uh, coming to light that the video originated from a fake account in Brazil that posted an edited version where the, this kid and this Native American protester... There's Giannis to the bottom right, right in the right. his glasses and the mustache. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was Covington kids there, and they all had, like, Make America Great Again shirts on right. or hats or whatever, and they were, like, high school kids, and they were on a D.C. school trip at the Lincoln Memorial, and then this protester was there. Um, later, we found out, marched up to them and stood in his face, but all we saw at the beginning was the clip of the Covington kid standing there with a little smirk on his face as the guy beat the drum in his face. So everyone was going, look at this, make America great again, racism, the smirk that kills. This is the same smirk of white privilege I've seen everywhere. And they were talking about like a 15 year old kid. Yeah. And then the longer unedited version of the clip came up and it showed that the Native American actually engaged, walked into him, uh, and the kid actually did nothing except stand there. When right. The full context came out. Right. So he went and sued for libel all these, um, all of these news outlets because what happens? The, everyone ran with the story. And it's like, then celebrities started retweeting it because everyone wants to look like they're this amazing person that cares when nobody really cares. The easiest thing you can do is retweet or tweet a hashtag. It means absolutely fucking nothing. Yeah. Why would you ever want to read a book or do your own research when you can just fucking listen to somebody do it in 10 seconds on TikTok? Or Why? Just, or if you want to be a good person, go. you know what good people do? They go do shit and they don't talk about it. That's so what it's it is. Like if you want to go do some fucking work, and go actually get out of your fucking gated community in Beverly Hills where you're tweeting from, yep. whatever former child celebrity you are. That's it. And go do something and stop fucking bragging about it. That's not what good people do. I don't want to see all, instead of everybody tweeting come November and being like, look at what I did, look at my sticker, just go do what you're supposed to do, do the right thing in the voting booth, put it to the right, and keep your head down. You know, that's all you got to do. I'm not endorsing that. I'm saying do the right thing. Go oh, to pa Patreon.com. I'm saying do the right thing. You know what I mean. Yeah, like Spike Lee. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying Spike Lee. Do the right, and I'm capitalizing right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying go to Patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. Join the matriarchy. Look at all the content we're doing behind the subscription model. That's the future of the comedy business. Go join. Go join. And by the way, obviously, Support I Support us. People don't. I'm a comedian. I, uh, uh, you know, grew up in New York City, have a multi-ethnic family. I'm more, I'm liberal cucked out, Chrissy. I just play the character piece like Stephen Colbert. So, so for some people, I message be like, how come, you know, you only talk about things to the right? Because this is the podcast. We're playing character pieces. I've only ever voted to the left. But 2020 is going to be different. You know what? I come at you in a different way. You're going to come see you in a different. You know what? Do you think this would be helpful if we got rid of political parties? Because like people always have yeah uh, beliefs and, and and policy uh, and policies that they believe in or back that kind of run the gamut that are either uh, liberal and like I have some things I'm liberal about I would be considered liberal and then some things I may be considered conservative. Why do I have to be married to a certain party? Why does a candidate have to be married to a certain party? In the gray zone, yeah. Yeah, why can't we just be, look at the dude, like, have two dudes, have them debate, hear their fucking ideas and be like, I like this guy better than that guy. Yeah, why does it have to even be Republican or Democrat? It's just uh, these, this individual's running and that individual's And we running. also have to do some standard for that now because that seal's been broken and I, and hope, I don't know if fucking Miley Cyrus is going to run or our, 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 our somebody else I mean it's got to be some standard where like you go to law school you have to get like a license to be a politician something you have to be, like you have to be a licensed politician I think we need to do licensing or at least like an open mic scene where you can really make your chops it's on the, what, on no, the I think political you need to have circuit a license. like you need a yeah. license to like cut hair you need a license to once you get into run for politics you have to get a license to do it I think that's the way to do it alright yeah. let's scroll down like let's we see got, what we, else is and going and a license to podcast like we got we got right. a license we got to a podcast. license to podcast yeah, yeah I mean you know listen do you want to say anything more about the fairness doctrine do you have anything else to add to it um it's a very interesting thing to go uh, to go research on your own. A lot of people blame the downfall on the repeal of the Fairness Doctrine that happened in 1989 during the Reagan administration. A lot of people say that had nothing to do with it. You go do your own research. You be the judge. Is this all because we lost the Fairness Doctrine? Do we need another one? Do we need something new? Do we need Chrissy D as president? You fucking answer the question. Yeah, because the thing is with me, with the Fairness Doctrine, if you voted for me, if I was mayor of New York City or president of the United States, which is pretty much just being president of New York City, is I would just put boxing rings, I put ropes up around certain areas, and if 
you want to fucking, the fairness doctrine will be you fight the fair one within these ropes. There's no cops. You just box it out and things get physical. You get taken physically because the truth of the situation is this. I know everybody wants to dance around. You know, everybody wants to be like, oh, well, emotionally and politically. The truth is physical physicality is the main thing that measures human being versus human being. So everyone's just going to get physical and then we'll see who's going to come out on top. It's the, it, take me physically if you want to say some shit. Forget about court. Let's get in the confines of the ring. Because, I, I, unfortunately, I'm going to say you're a candidate, even though you're my friend, that I'm not going to get behind. Yeah. I don't know if I support those policies. Because? Because I think that's taking us backwards. I'm not sure. But I, I've just got to revoke. I am i can't endorse you. Because, listen, you're YTF and I'm Chrissy the Hun. <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy the Hunt is back, baby. Chrissy the Hunt's back. I'm fucking running through the park. I'm on horseback. I'm a Mongolian Cut. chicken. Did you ever? Did you ever? Did you ever consider growing a man bun? Hundred percent, I would. I had one. I, uh, you had one at one point, never, right? It got long enough where I posted a picture with the man bun on top. Because let's be honest, you're a kid who who is peaking now, and I'm a kid that peaked early. It's I mean, is. when you look at the old pictures of me in high school, I was a stone cold. Fully charged, full throttle piece. And when we look at you at about the same age, you were 100% special. Special. But now I look like I'm special and you look like you're peaking. Yeah, it's just what it is. It's good, good times. What can you say? What can you say? I mean, look, listen, this was about the, this is the history of the news. I don't know if it was necessarily the history of the snooze. What do you think? Did anybody learn anything about the news? I, I, cause I think people really are gonna enjoy it because, first of all, you were fully charged. Yeah. And you were unchained. Yeah. And you got a little loose in the park again. Yeah. And we also learned a few things. Yeah. So we have some heavy editing to do. We got some heavy editing to do as well. And Atia is upset. We got a lot of we got a lot of things for our fans to consider. One of the good things about our podcast is people Let, let's let's let this one fly unranked for the fifties. Should we let this one fly for the 50s with yeah. no cap? For the 50s. Yeah, but the 50s got a promise. I'm talking to you the 50s. I'm talking to you, Richie G. I'm talking to you, Richie G. <laughs> Don't be a fucking rat. Yeah. Be a fucking cool kid. We'll tear the whole fucking thing down. This is for you, but it's all jokes. I'm just saying all the things here are jokes. If you are a rat, I'm just saying we were joking. Yeah, it's what it is. Yeah, we're but just kidding around. Here's what I was going to say was great about our podcast. What's great about our podcast is we we, we come at history in a different way. We come at it. That's, and yeah. that way is fully charged Franks and Beans. Yeah, listen. But what happens is it gives people some interest in it. And then they go, you know what? I listened to the history hyenas, mostly for the hyena, because the history is Franks and Beans. Right. I didn't learn a fucking thing. I got a lot of misinformation and fake news, but now I'm motivated to go find out what the truth is, because it's definitely not with those two fucking stupid kids. Stupid say. kids. Well, make no mistake, though. Now we're freaking really screwed in, and we got a college uh, college aged intern that's woke and dope that does the research and really. So, makes what are we paying Venetia for? Because Venetia keeps us kidding. on track. It, it's a joke. Because Venetia keeps us on schedule and keeps us on track, and she's the only one that's going to advocate for me to take two weeks off because I'm sick of WEPA. <laughs> 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 All right, patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. Um, we're going to read the names of the matriarchy, the newest members of the matriarchy. Every time you join in at the $10 level, we read your name at the end. We encourage you to make a funny name, a PPW, a pseudo penis of the week. So uh, here we go. This is the fun part. This is the fun part, and it, it usually gets good. I mean, the last couple have been fucking bangers. When you join, we encourage you to do a funny name. Every week, somebody wins. It's a fun game we all play. And let me just tell you something. You guys are hilarious. Uh, I just want to celebrate the person. I said it on Wep, I'll say it for everyone to hear. One of the funniest jokes someone wrote in my comments, one of our fans said, uh, "My eyes, if my eyes were any closer together, they'd be your feet. So, they'd be my toes. They'd be your toes. They'd be my toes. Which yeah. is good. Yeah. Here we go. All right, so let's start it up. Okay, here we go. Welcome to the matriarchy. Anna, Mills Pap, Miguel M, Kai Igawa. Wow, we got a Japanese kid. Yeah. Um, Shannon Frazier, John K, Moist Lips for Giannis's Tits. Uh, <laughs> That's a, uh, that's a Drexler. Tom Mortimer, Henry Jankowski, Michael Evans. Then we got Fred, my friend stole my piece, and now I'm called accordion dick. Stanky nips. Uh, yeah. In two almost. Those are two almost. So those are Drexlers. Then we got, in 2015, Chrissy finger banged my asshole while yelling racial slurs. Hashtag me too. Hashtag black trans lives matter. <laughs> it's cool. We can't support it, but, you know, it's what it is. Then we got uh, Ryan bringing the straight white male back. Okay. <laughs> Drexler. They're both Drexlers because they're funny. What then we got uh, Jack. Then we got de Blasio 2020. 
Uh, Derek so Owens. Your 2020 is a funny, funny sneaky yeah, one. Yeah, funny. Yeah. That's a chicken finger that's going on the list. Samuel Bowen, Jeffrey Grubbs, LGBT, Chrissy D. Put them on the list. On the list. Nice chicken finger. Chaz Pettis. Then we got Frankie. No fumes. And make no mistake, I imagine Chrissy D with an axe wound between his legs because I'm an FF. It's what it is. Trump 2020. <laughs> Gets a laugh, but yeah. All right. Caesar's. If he would have stopped at Frankie No Fumes, I think I might have thrown Frankie him on the No list. Fumes. Yeah. yeah, sometimes you be, I want to put half of his name on the list. Don't be afraid to just be a chicken finger. Chicken fingers are great. Which are simple and easy. Yeah. Uh, then we got Caesar Sanchez. Uh, then we got at, at Fail T Woodworks. Buy a table for me. I'll do it for a. Okay. At, at his thing is at Fail T, F A I L T E Woodworks. Buy a, table for, buy a table for me. Oh, yeah. I can't read the end of it. Screwed in kid. I can't read the end of it, though, but it is right. funny. What's the uh, Because it'll make the female in the room uh, uncomfortable. Well, just read it, and he'll, he's got a lot of editing to do anyway. But we're not going to put that just in. edit it, yeah. Then we got Matthew Heavy Peen Peroni. Uh, then we got Gary. This nickname's going to bomb to Stefa Yav. <laughs> <laughs> Creative points gets him on the list. Then we got, uh, yes. Ray, then we got Ray Nervous Gervis Gervais. Called himself Nervous Gervis. Um, then we got, uh, oh no, Ricky Nervous Gervis Gervis. His last name's Gervis. Okay. Then we got Grant. It's hard to think of a name, but make no mistake, I'll smack Charlemagne and fuck John McCain, and fuck John McCain Horvath. Got a bad read there. Can you just do it one more but time? He, he spelled it Join McCain. He meant to say John McCain. <laughs> All right. It's what it is. You, you spelled it wrong. Spelled it wrong. What were you doing? <laughs> okay. Next thing you know, uh, next, next one is, uh, what were you doing with my wife at 3 a.m.? Power washing LLC. <laughs> <laughs> is that the name of his LLC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's great. great. Get, put him on the list. Then we got Father Bill sucked my binky, but my name's not Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Front runner. Front, Front runner. runner. Yeah. Then we got Matthew Carpenter. Then we got Yams, a full three euro, looking to gobble Giannis's Giro. Gorchek. Uh, you know. If you said it right, it would have got you a bigger poppy. He belongs in the list. Yeah. yeah. All right, put him on the list. Yeah. Then we got Marky, parties fully charged with lip gloss on, his stink star. Mook. <laughs> Put him on a list. Uh, stink yeah. star is funny, right? Yeah, stink star is number one. Yeah, yeah. I think that's better than Smash Bean. Yeah. Yeah. My stink star? Yeah. Have you ever and he heard said that? he said he's sitting parties with lip gloss on. Yeah. <laughs> he said he's fully charged. Yeah, he's fully charged. I mean, that's one of my favorites of all time. And then his name's got, Marky, which is, I'm a big fan of the name Marky. Marky. Then we got uh, Dr. Julian. Why are there so many Sprite cans on the streets now? Pino. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then we got. Uh, John Schwarzall. Then we got Lickin' Yanni's Balloon Knot while Chrissy fills me with his gooey hot. Uh, okay. Then we got Tyler Fivas, Paul, Stephen White, Evan. Uh, then we got 25 is just blank. Uh, then we got Leaky Squeaky Pseudo Peepee of the Weeky. Yas. <laughs> <laughs> it's his Drexler. Then we got David Canales. Then we got the Fume Monkey. Um, <laughs> we got Drexler for the, just a good, clean, just, that's a frozen chicken finger, but it was cooked right. Um, then we got uh, Javier Gutierrez. Then we got Reese. I love it from behind. Uh, I hate China. Gay kind of Trump 2020. I mean, really good. But we can't say we that can't, we hate China. We but can't I say just, hate. Yeah, we just. It's really funny, though. Then we got um, Hunter Tovey, Julian Levy, Vincent Goff. Then we got Make No Mistake. Hillary is coming for Chrissy Conspiracy. It's just what it is. Uh, Garrett Dillard. Then we got Cute But Vicious Pig Whore. Um, okay. <laughs> Then we got Enna, Mills Pap, Miguel M, K. Agawa, Shannon Frazier, John K., Moist Lips for Yanni Tits, uh, Tom Mortimer, Henry Jankowski, Michael Evans. Then we got Fred, my friend, saw my piece, and now I'm called accordion dick, stanky nips. Uh, uh, in 2015, Chrissy finger banged my asshole while yelling, racial, while yelling racial slurs, hashtag me too, hashtag black trans lives matters. Uh, then we got... <laughs> Yeah, I know we can't say that. Yeah. Then we got Ryan bringing the straight white male back. Jack, de Blasio 2020. De Blasio 2020 is on, uh, the list. is on the list already from before, but we got to say it again because we're, we're all over the place with the edits. De Blasio 2020. Then we got, so that's a good one. We yeah. put that on the list. So then we got Derek Owens, Hafrican, make no mistake. Hafrican got on there too. They're on so, the list too, yeah. Hafrican. Then we got make no mistake, Antifa's leader, Venetia, did 9-11. Then we got squat shit, Adam Cristalini. Wait, wait a second. Squat shit is nice. Yeah. I, 
I'm Squatch gonna give it, it a Drexler. It's a good, it's a it's one of my favorite Drexlers. Watch it. Yeah. Then we got Adam Cristalini, Jeff Lawrence, Jake Walker. Then we got Chrissy DP me, Yanni P on me. Because make no mistake, I got the marriage license signed for all three of us in a polyamorous relationship. So that's what it is. So I think. I mean, listen. Let's read back who the winners are. But I mean, I think the winner is going to be. I think. I mean, we can read the names, but why waste time? Yeah. It's Marky Parties fully charged with lip gloss on his stink star mook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, his, la- his name's Marky Mook. I mean, Marky Mook. Marky Party's fully charged with lip gloss on his Stig Star. Number one of all time. Let's make, let's give him the whole. Let's give him right now. Who's been better ever? Who's been f- pure funnier than that? There's a lot of people, but I I don't know. It's it's. I mean, because the Stig Star and his le- his name's Marky Mook. Yeah. He might have got on the list just with Marky Mook. <laughs> just Marky Mook, yeah. Yeah, and because he parties with lip gloss on his Stig Star, meaning he just puts lip gloss on his ass and he dances around. If his name was Marty Mook, or if his name was just Party, if his name was just Marky Parties, fully charged with lip gloss, that that gets on the list. The fact that he did fully, or if he just, if, or if his name was just Stink Star. So any way you slice it, he's on the list. So that that constitutes. Might be number one of all time. That's what I'm saying. Because what any part of his name mixed with any other gets on the list. That's what I'm saying. So he's a five tool player. Yeah, he's a yeah. five tool player. I think he may be the Jordan of this list so far. Let's see if anyone can take his crown. There you go. All right. As always, patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys for all our fun. Check our dates at christycomedy.com, yannispapascomedy.com, historyhyenas.com. Uh, August 29th for me, Monmouth Racetrack uh, in Oceanport, New Jersey. Two shows almost sold out. Go get them, christycomedy.com. And then Yanni's at, uh, what's the date? August 12th? August 12th, I'll be in Royersford, Pennsylvania. Yeah, Royersford, Pennsylvania. I'll just, because uh, he doesn't have the mic on. So I'll just say he's in Royersford, Pennsylvania on August 12th. Go to YannisPapasComedy.com. And then also at the end of September, he's at the Stress Factory with Vinny Brand. Yes. Yes. Thank you, guys. Love you. We really hope you enjoyed that episode, whatever it was about. This is just a stock thing that we're taping on to every episode. So go make sure you rate, review us, subscribe, uh, turn on your notifications, get jiggy with it. And go to patreon.com slash Boys where things get really wild.